hindi na review yan eh, pero every year. Tapos we did actually a continuing study. What are these? These are the areas, very quickly lang, sentya na kayo ha. In the area of financial autonomy, may pera ba sila? Kulang! Alam mo, nilipat natin kapangyarihan, we transferred powers and authorities then, but we did not transfer enough resources. In fairness, as people would say, it, it, it's not really enough. But that's why we say, hey, maybe they should try to raise their own resources. So in the area of finance, and ito, I, I will leave this with you, and of course you can look. Well, these are specific uh, uh, proposed amendments from creation of barangays. You know one of the things, ito, Pilipino, Pilipino, we love to create gerrymandering, your own political science. We know that you create a local government. One time, may nagpunta sa akin, alam mo din, kailangan naman bagong uh, district, kailangan bagong provincia, etc. etc. I, 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 this is true, ha? Tapos, uh, because the people need to serve, etc. etc. Ano sa sabi niya? Actually, magka-graduate na kasi ako, kailangan ko uh, ng bagong district. I mean, this guy was so honest to tell me that. I said, sir, we have nothing to do with that. Pero alam mo, ang daming mga ganyan. You know, one thing that's wrong in this country, in one sense, is instead of amalgamating, may sasabi ko, we love to break up, we love to fragment. Bakit? Kasi, kasi si anak ito, kailangan ng district. The best example, of course, would be during the time of Chile when we created another district in Camarines for that Arroyo. Now there are plans to break up in Busan, so many, so many. I mean, you know, we create political units without looking at the social and economic dimensions. You're like, Congress, so you know that. You just don't care. There is also wisdom in consolidation rather than fragmentation. So, even at the barangay level, the city where I'm from in Baguio, we have uh, uh, actually 125 barangays. We did a study, and you know, you can only, you can be done with 25 barangays. But, question, who will amalgamate whom? I am nako, tayo yung politiko. Wala ano, pagpatay niya kasi mawawalan na. But that's one area in terms of uh, creation. Another, national local relations, I mentioned this. Very, we have a lot of proposed amendments to, and, and some, uh, some uh, policy options and recommendations. What are these? You know, decentralization, at least in this, I, I, I agree my my attorney here, that it should be seen within a broad historical context. Don't look at what's, what, what does this all mean? What is the question behind the question of students of political science? We are trained to just uh, look at the incident, but what does the incident mean? And I'm telling you, itong relation ni Itong nangyari sa, itong nangyari sa, sa, sa mining, itong sa, 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 sa hostage. Do, do, it's really a broader question. It's really a question of power. Sino ba ang bida dito? Eh, willing ba si national na ibigay sa lokal? And, and there are many uh, examples here. Pati namin mo. Very quickly. Ito, personnel. Ang daming problema sa personnel. Anong mangyayari kapag nag-create tayo ng bagong official? Alam niyo. Ang kaganda nito, isang palpak sa local government ko, ginawang lahat ng mga agricultural officers uh, required, uh, mandatory. Sabi naman, and this was Mayor Vina a long, long time ago, no? sabi niya, ba't ako may, I'm, you mean, I'm required to an agricultural officer in Makati? Isang kuilala yan ang aking, anong gagawin ng agricultural officer? Yung mga garden bond? You know, in other words, si national government magaling mag-prescribe ng one size fits all. Yun ang kagandaan ng local. Sapagkat, one size fits all. If you go to the Cordilleras, you know you guys are talking about nice foods. In the Cordilleras, we don't even have footpaths and food bridges. You know, so that is, yun ang diwa ng local. That's what local is all about. Uh, Looking at the specific situation, I, I, I like that, but all I'm saying is that there are many, many areas, uh, including the term of local official. You know, our constitution is so, is so, so reactive. I did a study on that. No, na, lahat ng ginawa natin ay is really uh, in reaction to Marcos. Uh, pag magkasakit ka, nilagay yata natin sa constitution. I mean, <laughs> ngayon, pati yung term ng uh, three years. But three years is too short. I think that I don't know if attorney uh, uh, agrees with this, but three years, you're a new official, what do you do? You run, first year, you run for public office. Second year, you do your job. Third year, you do your election. Kaya ang nangyayari, very short term ng planning. So this, this will require amendments, no? Pero ang gawin na, that we will self-compense. So we have our daughter run, our cousin run, etc. So dynasty. So does dynasty work? I don't know. But again, there's this, there's this thinking about if you pass an anti-dynasty law, it, was, it is almost class legislation. Let's look at the lawyers. That's right. But my point is there are a lot of proposed amendments. What we have is an imperfect document. Definitely. It has to be changed. But uh, what are the areas? How do we do it? And uh, strategically, do we do it? piecemeal or we do it omnibus. Yan na naman, pinag-uusapan yan. Pero usap tayo ng usap, hindi na yung time is moving. 
So, if you will die, you will not implement it. Like I said, the greatest thing is, we promised to amend the law every five years. Did we do that? We did not do that. So, is that the story of the Filipino? I don't know. I really don't know. Kaya nakakafrustate. Kaya siya sabi ko kanina, siguro, kapag nagsagawa na yung patas, tapos na ang kwento, hindi po kailangan implement. Sino mag-implement? Si, si, leader. But, isa sabi, we as a people, we should get disgusted. We should get angry. I teach in, in public art. I always tell my students, and mark of a student public art is, one, he knows how to get angry. He should get angry. And number two, he should know what to do. Alam niyo mga malalaking sign dyan? At one point, I thought that all the streets here were named Apesami Streets. Ayun pala, it's a big sign of this guy. I mean, so a student of public art, we went out, we actually did, did, did something wrong. My point is, kung hindi tayo magalit-galit, if we don't get upset, if these guys are going to continue doing what they are doing. That's why in this last part, we have, we as a citizen should get upset and angry and really call for, for the chat now for the phone. It is, I have one feel-good story. I mean, I was really searching, I found one. <laughs> it is, it is uh, misleading to say that the code has never been amended. Walang overhaul. Yeah, but there are little, you know, little amendments that have been done along the way. And I have one good one. Now, some of us may know the concept of recall. Uh, it can be done directly, when the code was enacted, it can be done directly by the people or by a preparatory recall assembly. Okay. In other words, uh, certain officials can initiate it. Ang nangyari is because the politicians, the politicians who lose, initiate the recall of the, of the incumbent almost immediately. In fact, having the Supreme Court, you can do it in the first year. The election itself can be done only in the second year. So this goes, it, it shortens your term even more. If it's second year, you're already subject to recall. And that, the recall through the PRA was deleted a few years ago. And how many recall, and dami ng kaso, if you're teaching law, you have to look at every case that comes up because they raise new issues every time. And then once the, the PRA was removed, how many recall cases did we have? None. Zero. It shows that the people themselves were pretty much happy with their officials or were tolerating their bad representatives. But the ones who were really behind the recall are the rival politicians who couldn't wait to get back into power. When they removed the PRA, how many cases? Wala. In fact, it's that the law said all pending cases dismissed. I'm not even sure that's legal. That's probably unconstitutional, but nobody questioned it. We have so many recall cases, the Comelec was running out of money. There was one time where they said they, they tried to recall the entire Sangunian Laguna, I think. And the Comelec said, we don't have any more money. <coughs> so that's the good, that's the one, one good way of amending the, the code. But if you want to talk about bad stories, I have a lot more. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot. We have, in, in 7160, pursue one to a constitutional provision introduce the concept of local sectoral representation. Ibig sabihin you know, sa lahat ng, ng sanggunian, certain seats are reserved for uh, 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 marginalized groups. It's like party this but not quite. So reserved seats. But the idea is to put there people who are normally unable to win the elections. The literature all over the world is encouraging. In every country where they practice this, uh, money for the needs of the marginalized increases in budget. Begin to change your budget, they begin to address the needs of the, of the poor, of women, Alibaba. In India, they have a requirement for certain members of the, the Sangunian, their local councils, to be women. And then I proof almost every study. What did we do with their code? We amended it and suspended that provision from operating, period, and never heard from it again. Yes, yes. That's why we don't vote for local sectoral representatives at local elections. That should be amended, especially since the evidence is already there. In, in these countries like India, for example, even if they no longer sit in the council, your budget stays the same. It is still pro-work. 
But I mean, you know, the, this is one thing that we should be exploring, but nobody wants to do it because they think, I think they don't want to share power with, with someone who's not in their uh, family or clan or party. So, I should have started with the guys first, then <laughs> next time. Or, uh, yes, there's a student with an accommodated student. Hello, uh, 16 years old, I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive. I'm President Aquino sa solving, in solving corruption in the national level. Para mas, para ma, magkaroon pa siya ng time or magkaroon pa siya ng interest na i-amend yung local government ko. So tingin niyo po ba preoccupied siya sa national code or preoccupied, ay national level ng corruption or preoccupied ba siya sa ibang bagay? Yun lang po yung tanong. Yung last po ako, that's not an excuse. If you're the president, you're the president of the entire country. And the fact is, uh, meron ka responsibilities uh, sa local governance. I'm like Dred. And that's the reason why you have a cabinet to help you out. That really is the reason. I, I, I hope na walang president, I never live to see a president who says that I'm too busy to bother me some other day. You know, hindi naman Alam mo, they all talk, I mean, at the level of rhetoric, sasabihin nila na, but is it really a priority? Unfortunately, as I said, mga kapatanong pa nga kung na-review ko, hindi nangyayari. And you know, it's, again, the story of our lives. Paano ni FBR, kung paano ni Nugatori, FBR, tapos era, of course, and even GMA. Was it ever a priority? It's never. Bakit? Kasi, you know, let's face it, at one point, it's only a priority they can control the local force. Kaya mahalaga yung Uh, yung yung tawag doon, yung clamor, yung demand ng mga NGOs to be autonomous of the national government. But you know, how can this happen when you continue to have a structure that is still quite uh, centralized? And in the sense that, you know, uh, the, the release of money, many of our NGOs still, in spite of autonomy, many of our NGOs still continue to be dependent on national markets. Kaya nga, nagpapakagod pa natin ang partido mga yan eh. The way I look at it, I don't blame them. It's as I mean, butterfly, butterfly. You know, some of them would say, I do this because if I don't do this, walang mapupunta ang mga, mga resources sa akin. So at the end of the day, it's still your classic old patron uh, client type of relationship where it's still controlled at the national level. For so long as our NGOs are dependent. So I talk about the young era. Come on, internal, internal, internal revenue is still very, very much in control of national government. Yeah, it's a control of power. Right? sa tingin ko ba uh, priority well, of course hindi nga mababasa ang utak niya pero nung siya ay naging uh, uh, chairman ng committee ng local government wala nang nangyari doon but at the level of rhetoric sinabi niya may mangyayari tapos may doon so uh, but, you know, as you said we still have five years uh, as you said we, I know we should demand it eh, kung iyon ang nasa priority rin natin no? but of course as I told you we are not romantic definitely I don't want to be mistaken we are not romanticizing uh, decentralization marami rin talaga mga You know, this elite culture, it does happen. It does happen when many of them themselves used to have your quote unquote dynasties out there, controlling politics, controlling the economy. It happens, but at the end of the day, it's beyond, as you said, it's beyond the law. It's we as citizens. So if we demand it, in time of God, we get involved. That's really what sort of democracy is all about, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, sa kayo ng pera daw, hindi dumadaan sa congressmen. Kasi walang pera kung kasi dumadaan sa local governments. But anyway, maybe that's the practical way that they implement how things happen. Because actually, you know, let's say, this is the professor uh, that I just uh, presentation. Well, I'm going to discuss this na how can the national government actually make things happen at the national level in terms of a strategy? Kasi wala tayong parties, wala programmatic parties, di ba? So, at the end of the day, really the control of the purse that allows the national government. So, there are weak institutions. A good example that I have, maybe the part for the example, is the existing cities that the Supreme Court changed its mind three times. No? So, if, if the Supreme Court cannot be dependent on having consistent over time, 
how can you actually be even legalistic about the implementation of the code? In effect, the context by which the code exists is also very deep. So, I'm not going to you with it. I'll go to whatever I can do about it and the way I go back to my first point. But ngayon, hindi nila binibigyan ng pera ng mga congressman. All the money is passed through the local government na kampi nila. And then, things happen and they get things done. Maybe they only give money to the congressman if they want a certain law passed. But, so, actually, the discussion on the LGU becomes relevant because smart guys have found a way to also humble Gloria. Because Gloria's mindset formulation was go to the Congress. Ngayon, kung ilipag ko dito sa kapila, lahat ng tao dito dito na sa Congress, kaya lahat ko abalisan. Diba? So that's how, that's the reality of politics in the Philippines. That's the law. Now, how do you align both? I don't know. Maybe you can suggest. Can we hear from the uh, gentleman on the side? Please use the microphone. Yes. Yes. Pena ha, on Boj and Paul Dinas Nieves from UD School of Economics. Um, tanong ko lang po, um, sa so parang natin ngayon, di ba, ako yung bilang member ng kawataan, uh, mapapansin natin ang bawat lunsod, bawat uh, municipalidad, may kanya-kanyang pamilya, di ba? Nakakilala ko, sinatago na natin pangalang Bandalu, yung napagkatapos ng mayor namin, si congressman na matatakong mayor, at papalit sila, papalit sila. Pero hindi mga lungsod na pagtapos naman ni tatay, si Junjun naman papal, tago natin sa pangalan Makati. Minsan sabihin natin, uh, pagtapos ni asawa, si asawa naman tago natin sa Marikina. Meron naman isa sa probinsya sa Mindanao na pagkatapos ni tatay, papal naman si anak kung maging Danao. Ano po bang problema dito sa local government code? Um, meron po bang sekreto ang itinatago ito? Dahil panahon na 1990, di ba? Nagkaroon ng demarcusification po noon na inappoint ni Pangulong Mark, uh, Pangulong Aquino yung mga pamilyang iyon sa, sulat na sa amin si, uh, si Mayor Abalos na hanggang ngayon yung kapatid niya susunod na ay sila pa rin na sa pamilya lang na umuno um, ito po ba ay isang hina local government code o ito po ba ay isang uh, magandang epekto o isa itong laso na sisira na um, sa kinabukasan namin mga kapataan maraming salamat Alam mo, uh, uh, isang dapat tignan natin dito yung role of the bureaucracy. I, 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 I'll begin by saying, yung sabi mong demarcusification, alam mo, maling-mali yan eh. The way we look at it is, when people take over, and uh, I'm not saying it's happening now, but they think they are here to rescue the world from evil, okay? But when they take over, they're even worse, because they don't recognize the value of the bureaucracy. So they said, we will demarcusify the bureaucracy. Alam mo din naman din 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 marcosify nila? Alam mo pinagtatanggal lahat and were they able to do anything? Hindi. So ang point ko rito, I might take that. But we have to recognize the role of institutions. Precisely because we have such big institutions that we are able, what's the role of the bureaucracy? What's the role of the civil service? To provide stability and continuity. Okay. At ganun din sana sa local level. Okay. Number two, yung sasabi ng, yung sasabi ng tungkol sa, sa dynasty. I mean, can this be done by fear? I mean, people would say, Alam mo, nasa batas yan, pwede naman tumakbo. So what do you do? You pass a law that uh, you have an anti-dynasty law, nasa ating saligang batas. Ang ganda, nasa ating saligang batas. Meron bang implementing rules? Wala. So what do they do? It's there forever and ever. So yung mga magandang halimbawa mo yan. So sabihin ko, alam mo tayong mga taong, taong bayan dapat magalit. Kasi tayo lang, tayo, I think that's generic and UP student. But we as a people vote for these jerks. We put them back in office. So in one sense, we have to really in fight back. But after having said that, you know, not all dynasties are bad, and you might kill me for this. But really, not all dynasties. May mga masasabak, may mga ma maybe we are committing an error of the third kind. Uh, what we say in policy. Na siguro mali yung pag-analyze si Georgie dito ang amarang mga... But maybe it's the wrong solution eh. Gagawa ba tayo ng batas? Ano, ganda-ganda na ating batas. So in election, eh, kung ang... I don't know if I'd like to get advice from attorney because this is really one one area. Is, that, is it just to pass a law that uh, 
automatically disqualifies you simply because you are part of that. Is that not a part of class decision? I don't know. I don't know. So people, sasabihin ka nila, eh, binoto kami. O nga nung, binoto sila. Siguro may mga tunay na binoto, may mga tunay na binili ng boto. But the point is, sila nakabudod. So, si mama, si pa, whatever. But meron mga magagaling dyan sa access. So siguro, we might be barking at the wrong tree. Pero kasi, yung ating constitution was very reactive. So we put everything we wanted there. Hanggang na kung magkasakit ang presidente, nandun. Kung he has to, uh, he has to disclose, etc. Et so our constitution is really one of the events we want. Nice. But it has everything, including the word love. Can you constitutionalize love? I don't know, but yes, we the Philippines, we love. Right? Come on, you know, some point rito. Sino kailan ang pag-uhin din ang ating salita ba? Kailan natin dapat pag-uhin? Siguro ngayon na. Huwag natin hintayin ng six years. Otherwise, ma-accuse naman siya na, na charter change to remain in, in, in power. So, I don't know. But ito nang, I don't know. What is your take on that? Because uh, it, you can look at it both ways. Kasi nga naman, kasalanan mo bang pinanganak kang abalos? Halimbawa. Oh, eh, kasalanan. Eh, magaling naman. Na, na, not them. No, no, no. Pa, sa mga yes. Kasalanan mo. Kasi, nakapag-aaral ka naman. No? Nakapag- uh, nag-aaral ka naman ng UP. Okay? Whatever, no? You know, it, it might be not fair to just automatically disqualify them, eh. You know, spirit. Kasi, what is the spirit there? To give chance for others. Kaya may sector of work natin. Eh, katagan na ng sector of work. Hinay-jack rin. Pati mga, pati mga security card. Merong sector of work. Ano ba naman yan? Magandang patas. I happen to work with commission, one commissioner dun sa, sa Poncom. Ang dami tayo magandang. It's nice. But at the end of the day, how do you? How do you operationalize? Including the local government code. Alam ba ninyo yung local government code? Five years. We had our constitution 1986. Lumakas five years later. Matatapos ni si Cory Aquino. Ang dami may ayaw noon. Nung mamamatay si Mitra. I, 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 I talked to Senator Mitra about that. You know, he was not a senator. Uh, sabi sa akin, alam mo, kayo naman. Wala tayo yung sinasabi si Pimentel. Ang ano, local government. Ako yung speaker mo. Ano yung speaker mo? <laughs> sabi sa akin, nag-iinapit siya. Kasi yung mga speaker says, if we did not push for it, it will not have passed. Because it's really radical na naman. But, let's push the end you know, further and further towards civic engagement, towards people participation. It's really all about empowerment. Eh? But will somebody get power, will somebody get, get rid of power voluntarily? Nah, no, no. Hindi pwede. And this is it. There are many previous attempts to, to enact a law sa political dynasty. See, the Constitution has a policy saying that we will prohibit political dynasties as may be provided by law. That means they couldn't agree when they were writing the constitution on the details of how to go about it. So they nila, so bahala na yung Congress. So they filed bills earlier and they get bogged down the same questions that the CONCOM could not resolve. What if, halimbawa, political dynasty ka sa local level? Are you banned from running for a national office? Aside from your basic question, what, you know, uh, it, it's unfair. By accident, I was born into this family. Magaling ako. Better than anyone who's ever been in office in the uh, Aside from that, you have questions like, like, uh, uh, what do you, can we give them a break? You know, two terms, then we ban it, and then let them ban again. Okay. The, 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 the sure, uh, bottom line, they couldn't agree either. So, it's never, I am going to make a prediction, it is never going to happen during your lifetime. <laughs> It will never pass this during your life. But unless they amend the constitution and they define it right there and then. Para wala nang pwede mong reklamo later on. They can't say, it's not fair. The fact is the people ratified the constitution and said, bawal yan political dynasty. On the other hand, you want to think about it because if we did have a law that Aquino would have been disqualified and our president would have been Estrada. A person was already convicted of plunder. Meron mo nga ganun. People started think, rethinking their position on, on dynasties because the the alternative is even worse. Can I say very quick lang? You know, maybe we're not looking at the, uh, the way I look at it. We keep on talking about the quote unquote supply side. We look, you know, there should be a law. There should be a law. There should be a law. Come on. I mean, shouldn't it be on the other side? It's you and I getting engaged. Now, if our our generation coming, generation coming. Uh, you're younger than me. But you know, you. if we have failed in this set, maybe, you know, it's at the supply side, it's at the demand side. Eh? We should have more active citizens. And this is happening in other parts. Why can't we do that? No? I mean, that's um, one of my favorite phrases. Question authority. 
End of story. That was something in the, you know, when you enter your classroom, not everything your professor says is right. Maraming BS na pinagsasabi dito. When meron kang pinabasang sa dyaryo, kung magaling na columnist, maraming kalukuan. You know, it's just question authority. And I think it's important if we do that, if you and I question the way these guys put all their signs all over the place, hindi mo lang sa Quezon City. I mean, tingnan nyo, ang lalaki mga sign dyan na talang, hindi pa kayo isang powerpoints on that, you know, it's ridiculous, parang ginagago tayo. You know, you have such big signs that you would think that the street is named after this guy. Then there's the tiny sign that says, to Quezon Memorial Circle, to whatever, whatever. But he's, I mean, what is this? But you and I, we tolerate it. Worse, these guys get elected. Worse, we elect them. So, siguro, maybe we have faith. It's not at the other level na siguro tayo mga kapatala. It's that, you know, ay, you put up your own parties, we say. Okay, maganda yan. Pero guess what? Sanggun yung kapataan. Anong nangyari? So young and yet so corrupt. So, ang daming mga SK dyan na, ano mo, ito nga, nakita ko, may mga proposals to abolish it altogether. I mean, we are really in deep trouble talaga kung tingnan mo eh. And, worse, we continue to reproduce ourselves. Parami tayo ng parami. I mean, there's a crisis looming or we are not already there eh. Or institutions are crumbling, you know? It's almost sad, but, but in that sense, you or student, the younger people should really to learn to really question authority. They might what we want. Now, kung hindi gagawin ng mga patas, hindi tayo nang gumain. You know? Yung meron sa patas, yung niyatawag natin, yung recall. Yung recall elections, maganda yan. Pero, being Filipinos, we abuse. Recall, ang ganda yan. You democratize uh, power, ang ganda. You democratize accountability. Yeah, so you can make laws, you can propose laws. Okay, people do the preparatory call assembly. Pero meron isang provision na sinabing uh, parang ba, impeachment. So yung mga nakaupo, halimbawa, ikaw yung mayor, kalaban mo yung sangkod yan, all of you just pass, marirecall yan. Guess what? Ang dami mga na pinagre-record. It, it all boiled down to we missed the whole point. Even din nagbakan, alam mo bang pinarecall nila yung yung mayor, pinarecall niya yung buong council. Sa, dito sa Patang, pinarecall yan. Ang dami tayong mga, mga record. It's a new toy that they found. Buti na lang na pinagla. May maraming mga, mga bagong records. The law is only as good as it was in here. What is the spirit behind this law? It doesn't do that well. May, at least sa uh, local government code, may tayong tawag na local development council. We could participate. Question, how many of us are, have been actively involved in local development council? Marami dyan. But don't put all your eggs in one basket. It will not work that way. I think we should begin with ourselves. Yung sasabi ko na, you know tayo, stop that. Do you, do, you, do you sort your garbage? May batas dyan. Di ba? Sort your garbage. But how many of us? Tagal-tagal na yung batas niya. Only until. So, how many of you in the room really sort your garbage? At home. See? Do you sort? You know, you begin with yourself eh. Sino ba sa atin sa sort ng garbage? Ano ba? Wag ka na halimbawa lang yun. Di ba? So, ito ko lang. So, let's not put all our eggs in. Wag ka na yung batas kayo. Come on. You know, we as a people should get engaged in that. Really, really upset. Uh, yes. Robert. Hello, I'm Robert. Uh, question lang po, because at the early years of the implementation of the local government, there were already uh, uh, clamors for decentralization, particularly of the health sector. Yeah. Uh, but then President Ramos, who was very determined for decentralization, vetoed the, uh, the bill from the Congress. No? Are there still clamors from the health sector, given that they already have the mal the part of for health workers, and uh, given the treatment now, because uh, health workers have mar magna carta, how about the other sectors which were not fully decentralized by the world? So, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, when we had the local government code, yes, we, we wanted to decentralize. But, you know, sometimes we go overboard, as we did. Everybody wanted the hospital, you know, district, just like everybody wanted a school. You know, but everybody wanting a state university. But yes, they're having clamors to re-centralize. And that's, that's good. In one sense, we recognize that. Now, you say something to let's not want to romanticize decentralization, uh, love and development. They have a role for the national government. So yes, as a matter of fact, marami ng mga hospital ang ibinalik. Kasi yung sasabi ko kanina, the capacities, kaya ba ng local question, kaya ba ng national. So yes, there are, in fact, agriculture rin, marami nagpapalik, gusto nang ibalik ang agrikultura. Sinasabi sa Department of Agriculture, at uh, din, din, nilipat lahat ng mga agriculture extension workers. 
So, nilipas sa lokal, but who's now taking care of? In fact, that seems to be the analysis of Senator Marcos, no? Uh, he says, you know, the problem there is we, we, we devote agriculture, but it takes us a role ng national. Na si national looks at the broader picture. Okay, you guys plant high variety crops, you guys plant uh, rice, and then on, in all kinds. Pero, if it's, if it's fragmented, yun din ang problema. Yung, I think, uh, I've read somebody, I mean, uh, na sometimes the problem of, uh, it might lead to what's called balkanization. Ibang maghiwa-hiwalay. But, para sa akin nga, we go, before we go there, I think we could move towards some kind of a federalism. Well, the federal structure, you know, you're, you're more autonomous. You know, pinag-usapan yan, tapos ipapasok na mayroon sa state. I mean, you, there is a proposal for that. Yung federalism, huwag natin pag-usapan yung mga yung but the, yeah, there are clamors for recentralism, and we should be open to that. Man. We should be open to that because there are certain things that national government can and should do. National planning, you know, any kind of uh, you know, analysis me at nga dito, among others, no? kung bakit tayo nagpokolbihan sa agricultura at sa pagkakula tayong national agriculture policy. Uh, Ikaw, it seems to me that the uh, framework behind the local government code is not really the problem. Uh, that there is nothing to change in the uh, principle behind the framework. Uh, and that the problem is uh, partly in the execution, partly in the uh, cultural context uh, within which the framework is applied. Uh, pero, ang hirap din kasi isipin yung uh, mga problems that have been raised so far with respect to uh, how local governments uh, operate or work or do not work. Uh, in the context of uh, the principle that I have in mind, which is the people get the government they deserve. Uh, kung, uh, in other words, if, if you allow yourself to be used by politicians, then you're going to get used. Uh, and then you're going to get a uh, faulty you know, uh, local government uh, that will not work for you. Uh, but if you, uh, but if you aspire to uh, uh, create or design a local government that uh, is really effective and uh, works for everyone's best interest, then you don't want to get Regardless of whether the uh, local uh, officials concerned are uh, part of the elites uh, or uh, are part of the political dynasty or whatever. Importante, nagtatrabaho sila para sa tangkayan. So, the question ko, I think, is how do you get from that point where your local governments don't work for you or the people's best interest towards the point where they, it works no? for everyone's best interest? Uh, uh, Professor Duliante spoke about uh, civic engagement, that we should at least get angry, no? that we should manifest this anger in such a way, or direct it, uh, in such a way that it will lead to results. Hindi lang yung anger na, you know, in, in quiet uh, places where no one hears us, no? and therefore no change happens. No? Uh, but still, you have the question of how do you engage uh, people to work towards uh, working for change? Uh, is it through a uh, party structure or through educational institutions or uh, by some other means? Uh, short uh, response, I guess, if you do local government, you can be part of the local government that will work for you. Both with, with your feet. Yeah. Well, you both think it's at one point, that is okay. Uh, Makati and uh, Kaki. Makati and San Juan. Uh, you're from Makati. At one point, Makati was losing businesses because nearby San Juan, nearby Kaki could offer more business friendly. That, that's what it is, a human uh, uh, friendly competition among them. How to bring in, you know, at the end of the day, it's really how to create jobs, how to create opportunities for these people. So, voting is a trick would really be one of them. Uh, yes. uh, I really think abroad, uh, I think you see that. Is there a problem also with the training of local executives? Because if I, I used to attend the local council meetings, the level of debate is really very high. 
Like for example, if they decide that I have to open or uh, extend this road, but the level of debate is very high, including funding, and there is the idea that why don't we create businesses here so that we recirculate the money inside? No? Again, yeah, I, I know New Zealand actually is one of the, uh, it's always cited as one of the most uh, 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 structure that has a very autonomous local government. You know, okay. But again, are we focusing on the and on the supply side? I mean, we vote people because it's a basketball star, you know, he has a nice name, like the Gapirs or whatever, whatever. Maybe we should vote, we should focus ourselves on our, as a citizen. Say. Why, why do we vote for people? Because it's also a function of and kasi natin eh. So what do you do? You, you know who's popular, who comes out on TV. So we have to work on the demand side, I think. Because I I, I used to head what's called the local government academy. You know, uh, you know uh, nice vision, uh, training, open capacity for local officials, etc., etc., which is good. But you can only do so much, and you know what? Sometimes training, come on, training is for dogs, as they say. So <laughs> use the word capacity building, but still the same, you know. So after having said that, you know, I think we should work on us. It's really like the voters' preferences. That's what the democracy is all about. You know, it's something that's unfortunately and condemning us, of course, no. But we really should work on on the demand side, how we can. Otherwise, you guys, you yourselves run for office, but again, when some of them run for office, they become even worse than those they have been criticizing. So what do we is it a vicious cycle? I don't know. That, that's where we are. Talaga. That's the state of law. Kaya, may, pero meron tayo ano, feel good stories. Okay, you know, we're local officials. You know, you, some of you might act like Hagedor, no? But hey, Hagedor, very innovative yan. Alam mo, Hagedor is the mayor of Palawan. Alam mo, nung, nung bakaw siyang mayor, sabi niya, na-stop niya yung yung wedding. Na-stop niya yung lagging. How did you do it, mayor? Eh, ako yung wedding lord noon eh. Ako yung lagging noon eh. You know, it's joking, but you know, but after that, no? That, eh, quite innovative ang sabi niya noon. Uh, I would like to stop yung, yung, uh, uh, yung, uh, what, yung kanyang uh, crisis as far as logging and, and, and it was really an environmental crisis. But he asked the bureaucracy, meron tayong pera pang gamit dito sa crisis, calamity. Sir, hindi lang gumag, uh, pag calamity, kapag floods lang, kapag, uh, kapag uh, sudo, kama magagamit. Hindi ko po pwede gamitin yan para sa environment. Hindi po pwede kasi yung calamity. You know what he did? He declared an environmental calamity. <laughs> And you know, they sued him. Guess what? He was up here. So, you need people who think out of the box also. Eh. Yung mga natapang na pwede ikulong, pwede hindi matapang ba ikulong. In fact, I've told many local locations. Alam mo po, one uh, indication. Now you're doing your job. How many cases do you have before the ombudsman? Eh, you know, cases lang naman, hindi pa, hindi ka naman convicted pa eh. So, you know, I, I myself, ang kami, as we speak, meron nag uh, reconsideration, magpalit na naman sa ombudsman yung kaso namin na, na, na dismissed. But you know, it's just part of the job. When you work in government, you should be open for that. You know, pag wala kang kaso, siguro wala kang ginagawa. Because you're pushing the envelope. Hindi ka naman ako if you're a good, a fair uh, sense of uh, justice in this country. Uh, other uh, questions? I see a hand there. Hello, sir. My question is for Main Alex. I'm from NC Park. I'm Alex. Um, ano po? Um, you said a while, a while ago na ang kailangan kong baguhin yung principles on era sharing, like yung, yung land area, population, and um, era sharing. And you said na dapat um, maganda kung gagamitin ay ang poverty index and performance index. Pero don't you think po na medyo problematic din po yung dalawang measures na yun? Kasi here in the Philippines, um, we measure poverty. Um, parang ang the poor is according to the food FIES survey, FI survey are yung mga tao na meron meron lang one dollar a day so if you're kung, kung meron kang pera na more than one dollar a day hindi ka na poor and so parang ang weird na kapag kunwari ang isang si LG, LG local government e ang marami sa mga people dun ay um, mga mahihirap na below poverty line talaga sila which is lower than a dollar a day then yung kabilang LGUs parang um, a bit 
higher lang, like 45 pesos lang yung pera nila. Parang ang weird na um, mas mas magkaharoon ng mar mas mas maraming share yung makukuha ng kabila kaysa sa other. And on performance index naman po, I would assume na kaya po na kaya po develop ang isang local government is because maganda yung performance niya. So kung performance yung titignan natin, hindi po ba medyo leaning yun sa mga develop na local governments na po. Um, parang I am questioning how how performance index and poverty index should be operationalized. Thank you. Uh, but that's an excellent question. No? Uh, first and foremost, let's look at the instrument. Era. It's not working. Why? Uh, population, land area, inequality. What does land area have to do with it? The bigger your land, the more you should have. It doesn't make sense. Maybe we should introduce others, such as maybe density. So, dito ngayon, papasok yung mga maraming course among spotter areas. But, but, so, first question, we have to revise it. The number two, we have to devise, come up with instruments to measure poverty. You know right now, what we have, it is the story of our lives. Eh? In the Philippines, what we have is income classification. Alam mo, sasabihin sa mga mayor, magkawa ko yung ating municipality from, for, from third class to first class. It doesn't mean anything. Pagwagan provincia po, from third class to fifth class. It doesn't mean anything. Because it's just really, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't translate into uh, poverty, it doesn't translate into that. Okay, so we have to devise ways, by which how do we classify, how do we target? But I think it's important. Uh, when the role of national government is to look at the, the funds available and to give it. You identify where, where the poor are. Is it in now? Is it in, in, in Caraga? Is it in Mindanao? Is it there? Then you, that's, in other countries, that is the way they do. They target the poor. Why Australia? Well, you, you, you can see that Australia, the farther you are, from uh, the capital, they call it the disability. The more you should have, which makes sense, di ba? I mean, back, and, and ang sasabi ko, bakit si Makati mabibigyan pa ng ira? Alam mo si Makati, kapag alisin mo yung kanyang ira, he won't even feel it. I think the ira is not, is not even 10% or 20% of its budget, because it's rich. So, it, the point is, the principle behind that, that the internal revenue allotment should be a transfer that would be that, they, uh, that would be targeted towards those who need it, those who have what's called in the literature disabilities. No? But at the same time, at the same time, you also have this performance. And I think it can be done. Your performance, you can have a lot of people who are of good housekeeping. Simple than your performance. Eh? So as economists, I remember, you, you come up with a factor and say, uh, you see the good housekeeping, simple than that. There are no adverse findings. Meaning to say, Adverse finding. When I was working in government, may, may mga adverse finding. Wala pang mga dinis allow, ganun-ganun. Kapag wala, yung pwede. Ikalawa, uh, na, na, na post by yun yun. So, it is really a work in progress. But definitely, what we have now is not acceptable. So, we work on what are your good performance measures, and what are your good poverty. We, we go beyond the FIES, how many, you know. May mga proxy indicators, may, may mga proxy indicators yung mga pwedeng gawin. Kali mo, may mga construction na doon, ilang business permits ang pinigay, etc. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Hello. Yeah. Everyone who's ever studied our era has come to the same conclusion. This is not the way to do it. And there are so many other suggested way, uh, factors to include in the distribution of income. But I think there are certain provinces now that rely on the era for 90%. 90%? lang alone. I think wala 90% era. Wala without the era. It's wala ka. so much They're not making it productive because they're relying on the era. And that's the reason why everyone wants to be a city, right? Not because it's a culture, you know, a center of culture or there's a financial boom. Because they just want a larger piece of the pie. But you know, it's you who just messed up so many things. There's the recall, like the term limits, like the idea. And, and every time you talk to a local official about it, the instant they get into Congress, they don't want to talk about the era. Nobody wants to amend it. Everybody knows it's wrong, but nobody wants to amend it. Because after the term limits apply, I think this is my theory, just a uh, house, then they have to go back to the local level. And you don't want to be blamed as the you know the person who took away our era. But but that's another reality of the case. Uh, just a quick 
situation, I was thinking about it. Why don't, uh, instead of, no, gusto to me, no, 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 uh, why don't we reduce the taxes that the national governments collect and then classify certain taxes that can be collected locally so that the local officials will become more entrepreneurial rather than be focused on gaming the ERA system, no? Because, parang, ano mo, nangubos yung oras ng local official, makalap ng paraan, mapalaki yung ERA nila, rather than improving the business. So, for example, mining, you can say that's a national tax to mining because that's a national resource, but other things can be local. We, may think something. The local officials are so out of it, at a certain point, ang request nila is not to stop the ERA, but to include it, to expand it, to include all government income. Official statement ng, I think, mula at the time, the Union Global uh, Authorities. All government income, they don't get it. And, they, and the position is this, this is the only way we're going to be autonomous. Duh! Yeah, it doesn't take you autonomous, it makes you more dependent on the national government. I don't see why they, we can't get it. Is that, is that what your people want to want to hear because it doesn't make sense from any point of view. Pero yung agitate nila. Yung po sa national resources, iba namang provision yan sa both the constitution and sa code. So may share dapat yung local level, but they're still having problems implementing that uh, as well. I, I don't know about yung proposal. I, I still think increase the pile. Kasi what is that transfer? To go back to what you said, no? Ano ang magiging yung sa performance? Uh, ben Jokko used to say, alam mo, kasi uh, it, it could even, if, if, uh, it could lead to what he calls um, substitution effect. Now, if you're very dependent on ILA, why should I collect taxes? Tatagin naman si ILA, doon papasok yung performance. Uh, I think some, some modality or should be made in performance should be included. If, if I do collect enough taxes, alam mo, baba ng ating tax collection rate, ang pinakamataas ng sa ating process, I think 65%. It's pretty, pretty that's the highest. Na. So why don't they uh, collect taxes? It, it can be a political, it can be a political uh, thing. Uh, you know, if you raise taxes, but I think it can be done. It's been done in Japan. It's been done in other countries. We can do it, but you know, we feel because we claim to be so smart. So why can't we do that? You know? Why, why, why do have this, this, this era that is really very staid? You no. Know? So, okay. Number two, I, I think you know, internal revenue allotment. These are taxes from internal. Hindi na kaya include yung mga external, yung mga uh, duties. Uh, uh, yeah, from customs and that. It should be increased. But look at it from the perspective of the role of national government doing the equalizing. The point is, it's a perspective. It does not belong to national. Galing na sa local eh. Sa kanila talaga yun. In fact, I have a slide here that says returns. Do you know that in, in, in the States when they talk about devolution? Devolution is actually return. So we just have to return to them what belongs to them in the first place. It's really returning. So yes, it's collected. It does not belong to national, it's still returning to them what belongs in the first place. And now to, to end with yung, yung resources. You know Marawi, they have one of the most expensive uh, elect, elect, uh, electric grids. And they have right there the, uh, you know, your Lake Lanao. You know, well, there's something wrong here. I'll buy. They have geothermal. Fantastic. There's really something wrong. So there has to be a recognition also of your internal wealth. You bear the social cost and even environmental cost. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, uh, well, the code already talks about in 40%. They should have at least 40% of that, which, which makes sense. But again, implementation becomes a problem because, you know, you we always go to Mr. TRO. You know, when this, we, we stop everything, we always go, we go to that. Yes, it's about time for us to end the discussion because it's not going to end uh, by, uh, even by 4 o'clock. Uh, because talking about local governments uh, and local government issues uh, would really open up a Pandora's box of uh, other uh, issues directly and indirectly related. Um, uh, but what I think needs to be done at this point is for, uh, for uh, people in the academe to initiate uh, further uh, serious reflections and studies like this one uh, and discussions to uh, reflect on the uh, framework uh, that we have with respect to our local government uh, system 
the context within which this system operates and the uh, practices uh, that need to be evaluated. So uh, with that, I close uh, this uh, discussion. And I think uh, the uh, uh, proceedings of uh, this afternoon's forum can be accessed uh, through this, uh, I'm not really very familiar with the technology, but there is a plug uh, of the third world that you can uh, use uh, to access not just this uh, forum's proceedings, but the uh, other uh, forums that have been held so far. Uh, so with that, we end these discussions, and I'd like to uh, thank our particip participants, our guests especially, uh, and also the uh, organizations that have made uh, this uh, forum possible, Third World Study Center, uh, the Philippine Political Science Association, the Office of the Vice President for Public Affairs, and did I forget this? The Dean's Office of the College of Arts and Letters, especially. Thank you. Thank you.